Assalamu alaikum and a good day to everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining us in this uh, first ever webinar, actually. We should mark this event because this is the first time we have a collaboration between the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport Malaysia as well as the Federation of Malaysian Freight Forwarders. And this collaboration is to mark a webinar series entitled uh, Logistics Tech Talk. But this webinar series, actually we have a bunch of series. There's gonna be three to four sessions in this series, but we're kick-starting this with the good news that we heard from the PM. We've heard that there are some packages, uh, financial assistance packages out there to assist Malaysian companies, SME specifically, to get themselves digitalized. Um, so we're very happy today to have two very important people, I would say, in our industry. Uh, one person who leads a whole bunch of freight forwarders and one person who's actually from the government itself. And he's gonna to talk to us about how we can actually get our hands on these grants and what are the processes involved. So the objective on today's series, uh, which is the digitalization of Malaysian logistics service providers, the objective of this is how um, uh, we, the objectives are to highlight the challenges faced by our local Malaysian logistics service providers in their technology adoption efforts. Would it be the challenges would be either financial or they could even be the knowledge on uh, solutions that are available out there. Maybe we don't know what is out there and what, that, what is it that we can use. And I think another big, huge challenge is uh, skilling our human resources. That means ensuring that our, uh, everybody in the company is able to actually use these technology tools. Another objective is to understand what facilities are available. So we have um, somebody from the government today, I will introduce our speakers, and he will explain to us what the process is, what are the uh, financial assistance that are available, and what is the criteria for us to actually um, apply and get these grants. So now without much ado, allow me first to introduce the panel of uh, speakers that we have uh, today. Chairing the session today is uh, CILT Malaysia President. Uh, we have T.S. Haji Ramli uh, in our room. Also with us today is the, uh, our key panel speakers. We have Mr. Elvin Chua. Mr. Elvin Chua is from uh, the Federation of Malaysian Freight Forwarders, and he's the president of this association. And also with us today from the government, we have a very interesting, um, guest today, guest speaker, Mr. Muhundan. Mr. Muhundan is from MDAC and uh, literally we're going to hear it from the horse's mouth. So Mr. Muhundan is going to talk to us about how the government can assist us in this. Just to give you a little bit of a background on both our speakers. So first I'll start with Mr. Elvin. Mr. Elvin is the president of FMFF. That's how uh, we refer to the Federation, the long name. He's also the deputy president of the Slango Freight Forwarders and Logistics Association, SAFLA, and an accredit which is an accredited uh, member of FMFF. Mr. Elvin Shua became the president of SAFLA in 2009, and he has held the post of the president until 2018. And in 2009, uh, Mr. Elvin was elected as the president of FMFF, and he still currently uh, is in his term till uh, 2021. At a regional level, Mr. Elvin is the current vice chairman of AFA. AFA is the ASEAN Federation of Forwarders Association. He was the vice chairman of AFA from 2012 to 2014, and the chairman from 2014 to 2016. He has been involved in the logistics industry for more than 40 years and has vast experience in shipping and freight forwarding industry. He runs his own company, Eastrex Group of Companies, and he holds the position as the managing director. Mr. Elvin is the member of the Industry Advisory Council, Department of Polytechnic Education under the Ministry of Higher Education. He is also a Kasatria appointed by the Ministry of Tourism to promote international events and conferences in Malaysia. As a resource person, he's also a member of the U Customs Steering Committee. Besides that, Mr. Elvin sits on the Trade Facilitation Cluster Working Group and Transport, transport Infrastructure and Freight Demand under the National Logistics Task Force 
to implement the logistics and trade facilitation master plan. Now, with his vast knowledge and experience in the field of logistics, we have invited him, and I know Mr. Elvin pretty well. I've known him for a long time, actually. Uh, yeah. I've been in this industry long enough, and I know uh, Mr. Elvin has been a real champion in terms of helping our local logistics service provider. Our second speaker after Mr. Elvin is Mr. Mohundan. So I will uh, introduce Mr. Mohundan, give you a little bit of a background on him after Mr. Elvin has finished his, um, his session of the, of the talk today, of the webinar today. Also, I would like to um, request that if you have any questions that you want to raise up, we will have a 15 to 20 minute session between both speakers, uh, starting with Mr. Elvin, and after that followed by Mr. Muhundan. So in that session, you may add your questions, whatever questions that you would have in the Q&A, which is at the bottom of your screen. And we will take these questions up in the second 30 minutes of this, uh, of this session, webinar session, and post these questions to our speakers. So let me now pass the mic to Mr. Elvin. Mr. Elvin. Uh, thank you, uh, Resma, and uh, welcome, Mr. Muhu. Uh, and thank you for joining our this uh, first uh, Tech Talk. And also, Tanji uh, Ramli, you for giving us this opportunity to come together for the country and also for the industry. All right. This Tech Talk are designed to address critical and relevant issues impacting the logistics industry, in particular, in particular, while the government has taken positive steps to steer the economy toward IR 4.0, including implementing a slew of initiative strategies and funding to drive IR 4.0, our emphasis in the first tech talk is digitalization of the logistic business and not so much of IR 4.0 per se. The manufacturing sector especially SME, are ready to embrace IR 4.0 for higher automation and connectivity to improve productivity, efficiency, and quality. The logistics industry is more toward adopting the right software and application integrated seamlessly in a single platform, together with greater use of IoT and AI to conduct their business anywhere and anytime. And this would be the main thrust of our first tech talk today, titled Digitalization of the Malaysian Logistics Service Provider. The, Fed the Federations of Malaysian Free Forder has discussed and identified Technology Solution Provider or TSP under the SME Business Digitalization. The MCO has driven many of our members to leverage digital means to remain in operation, to manage their daily work and workforce remotely, setting a new normal or new model in how they run their businesses. Many of our members experience disruption in their supply chain and operational challenges as most of their software are client-based or silos. They need full staff to operate during the SOP, uh, during the, 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 this uh, MCO time, and also to follow the SOP on social distancing. And this is a big challenge because we need the full team to be back in office to do their operation and also to do, to do the clearance for, our, for the customer. So this is actually a very, very big challenge for us. That's why uh, the Federation have come out with this initiative to, to help our industry, especially logistics, to go digital. So we have a team here to, to say that you know all our our businesses must go digital, and uh, be able to have uh, cloud-based software with uh, interfacing. So uh, what the federation have done is uh, we have uh, spoken to quite a number of uh, software providers for lo for logistics, especially for logistics, the lo the the supply chain software, you know the the, the accounting software, and also warehousing. Uh, transport, haulage, freight for the customs. So now we have come up and concluded that, you know, there are a few product, uh, provide, uh, service providers who are willingly and readily want to come in together to form a platform for our industry. So it is important you know, with this platform that the government can support us you know, 
so that uh, we can start something like uh, start up uh, this uh, digital uh, provider for our industry. All right, this is very important. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elvin. So uh, what I what I try to understand or what I'm trying to understand here is that um, the Federation, FMFF, has already um, pretty much um, identified. Have you all identified a bunch of your members who are ready to go digitalize, uh, to digitalize their uh, operations? What I have done is I've called a meeting together, uh, a live meeting together with all our states, uh, uh, this member, all mm -hmm. the state members. Uh, uh, and all of them are, read, uh, are saying that this is very important now, right? So that we are able to work anywhere, anytime. And then, uh, you know, we, 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 I, we look at the, all the software that we have in, in each, each individual co company. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, all of them know that, you know, all the software are client-based. Yes. So the choice, they had to do the changes, right? Even up to now, without, without the vaccine, you know, it's very dangerous for all your staff to be in the office. You wouldn't know who was spread, you know, just, just one small tiny spade, you know. It's all we need, exactly. Then your company will be closed, you know. And it's not just the the company, right? The family of your staff and, and everybody is in, involved. So it's not uh, good to take this kind of risk. So that's why I'm introducing this in an accelerated way. Thank I'm you, very uh, I'm speaking to the software provider every week to make sure that they are ready to to interface all the software. For, uh, for our requirement. Yeah, so uh, so the way we see it, you've done a lot of your, your part of the work. So you've got the, the users ready. You have also identified a, a bunch of uh, providers, logistics, uh, technology solution providers. And of course, we all got really happy when that announcement came on, when the PM said that, hey, there is financial assistance out there for companies to move in and get yourself um, enabled digitally. So. Let's now, um, let me uh, introduce our, uh, yes, yes, Elvin. You need the, the, the financial uh, this assistance on that. We need a, a government agency uh, to coordinate and make sure that, you know, the software, the, the, the software provider, the technology software provider which are coming in uh, is, you know, is has been, has been, uh, has been audited and verified audited. by and an agency of our government. Our, that's this very that's why where this is where MDEC have to come in and Ex make this announcement. Excellent. So that brings us to MDEC now. So we've already heard what the, what Mr. Elvin has told us. So it's not just about having the need, meaning that uh, you know you have to go digitalized, you know you need funding, but you want to make sure that whatever funding that you get that the service providers that you are working with, that these service providers have had some form of verification from a government agency so that we know we're purchasing the right kind of solutions for ourselves. So now yeah. I'm going to introduce our next speaker to you. So our next speaker, Mr. Mohundan, uh, he, ha he comes with about, he is the, wait, hang on first, let me introduce his designation in MDEC so we can all get excited to post questions to him. So Mr. Mohundan is the director in the business digital adoption for MDEC. And he comes with about 20 years of experience that spans uh, in the domains of entrepreneurship, education, healthcare, technology management, and organizational capability development. Professionally, he is a trained project management professional and information security lead auditor and a certified professional marketeer. At the Malaysian Digital Economy Corporation, he leads the business digital adoption team, which spearheads the growth of the domestic landscape, eventually helping more Malaysian businesses embrace digital adoption and innovation. Prior to this, he led the startup and entrepreneurship team and introduced several new global initiatives to Malaysia in the areas of big data, internet of things, and digital games. He also headed efforts in building capabilities of local technology companies, the MSE Malaysia companies via customized programs to support their growth into regional markets. Uh, Mr. Muhu completed his digital transformation programs from, from UC Berkeley. He holds a BSc in biotech and an MSc in corporate communications from Putra University of Malaysia. 
He mentors in several local and international programs, such as the UOB FinLab's Digital Transformation Program, McKinsey's Youth Leadership Academy, and speaks in conferences. He's a passionate martial, he's a passionate martial artist. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. A martial artist. I'm not going to mess with this man who has represented his country. He now truly believes in evangelizing the digital economy, giving him the purpose to fight again for his country, this time in ensuring a new economic growth for the, for the nation. Wow. Mr. Moho, why don't you blow everyone away? I welcome you to take the mic now. The, it, the floor is yours, sir. Very good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Ms. Reshma, um, uh, Tuan Haji Ramli, and uh, uh, Mr. Alvin from CLT as well as FMFF. Okay, first of all, my apologies. I was I, I wanted to give you a shortest shorter CV of uh, or or of my uh, <laughs> background. Unfortunately, I think that was a longer version. So I think that took a bit of my time <laughs> in actually sharing the real thing today which is on the uh, SME digitalization. So I think very prompt, uh, Mr. Elvin, thank you so much for the uh, uh, context that you have provided just now. And I think it's very, very relevant uh, to what I would like to share with everyone today. You know, so I think I just want to put a bit of a caveat. I think um, um, I would love to have a conversation with everyone in terms of how can we help you to digitalize, yeah? Obviously, there are a lot of things that was discussed in the last couple of uh, weeks uh, with, with all the announcement that was out there, um, which covers quite a bit more. But I think it'd be great if we can spend the next uh, you know, 40, 45 minutes looking at the digital adoption of uh, the uh, SMEs, particularly from the logistics uh, industry. So uh, allow me to share uh, uh, my deck um, to just give you an overview uh, of what we have uh, here. Uh, okay. So I hope I'm audible, uh, Ms. Yeah, Rishma. audible and and visible as well. All. Thank you very much. Okay, so I just like to start with uh, Winston Churchill. I think you know, of course, he's a character. Perhaps either you love him or hate him. Uh, but there are some things, I think, which is very relevant to what's happening today. Uh, we all agree that the current situation with the pandemic, there have been many challenges on many different fronts. But difficulties sometimes, if mastered, are also opportunities. And I think as entrepreneurs, as businessmen, as, uh, as you, would probably be able to relate this uh, and, and you know, share this idea as well. So just before I proceed, of course, um, allow me to just share... Um, my organization. So you probably have heard of MDEC, Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation. So MDEC basically is a government agency uh, that is mandated to drive the digital economy. Uh, we sit under the uh, Kementerian Komunikasi dan Multimedia and our primary role is basically to provide advisory to the government when it comes to digital economy uh, as well as work very closely uh, with the industry in identifying the gaps and so that we can bring it to the government and see how best that we can help. Yeah? And of course, we basically focus on three main pillars, as you see here. Um, the first one covers um, the digitally skilled Malaysian. So this is all about, uh, as what we just mentioned, just spoke about just now, in terms of talent upskilling, right? How can we ensure that we have the right pipeline of talent when it comes to digital um, and as well as employees in these organizations and how can we help them to upskill or even perhaps reskill. The other part is where I come from to be digitally powered businesses, to support businesses in terms of helping them from end to end. And here we have the supply and demand or what we call it. Supply meaning to say all the technology companies, the startups and all that. Uh, we help them, we look at how we can support them in, in growing them, uh, giving them market access as well as funds. Uh, and also the other part that I work on, which is pretty new, but growing very fast, which is to work with the traditional businesses, the non-tech businesses, um, such as yourself, right? In terms of how can you embrace digital and how can you maximize on this opportunity? The third one is, of course, as our role to support the government, we also provide um, platforms for many of the multinationals or any kind of investment that would be able to come to Malaysia when it comes to digital such as big data, IoT, blockchain, and many others. 
and also that we can connect them into our economy and make them as part and parcel of our ecosystem um, so that we can enjoy more in terms of job opportunities uh, as well as business. And all this, we sum it up by calling it as Malaysia, making it a heart of digital ASEAN. Yeah? So let me go straight to the crux of uh, my presentation today. And I think when it comes to digitalization, yes, um, there are many aspects to it. Um, we always look at it from our own sector. But even before that, digital today is everywhere. It touches on everything that we do, the way we live, the way we work, the way we play. And therefore, digital has encompassed everything that we do. But most importantly, how does it help us in our business? So the way we see digitalization is, number one, you should be looking at digitalization from a competitiveness and uh, uh, what do you call this um, aspect, perspective, right? Uh, if it does not help you to compete better in what you're doing, and therefore then there probably some some invest some wrong investment you're putting in when it comes to digital, right? And so I would I would be guided by this uh, five areas, uh, if you could relate um, to digitalization. Number one is can you streamline your current work process flow? Can you do things faster, for example? Can you reduce costs in terms of how you're working, whether it's with your people, with your customers? or even with um, the government. Uh, third one is how can you automate some of these processes so it becomes uh, faster or cheaper. And of course, with doing all this, there should be some bottom line improvement in terms of your improved revenue. And the final part, I would say actually the most important would actually be in terms of how can you interact with your customers, especially in the current situation. I'll share with some of the challenges being faced and there are some solutions that you can look at uh, opportunities. So in a sense, if you're able to make things faster, cheaper, and better, that's it. Technology should not be something very complicated or expensive. If somebody's talking to you and they can do any one of this, all these three, then you know you're on your you're on your right track. The other thing that I wanna want you to consider would be the term that is always used, and its term is always used interconnectedly, um, sorry, interchangeably. Um, and they are connected in a way, but they are different in terms of the concept and approach. The digitization and digitalization. Both are important, but both are in a different maturity. Digitization basically is just changing from analog to digital form. For example, in your current business, if you're into warehousing or whatever not, the basic form of capturing data or, or all the assets you have probably be on a logbook, right? The simplest way. And if you're able to convert whatever that's written on a book, a logbook into an Excel form, for example, that's digitization, a pure conversion from uh, simple written to digital. Now, digitalization is far beyond that. Digitalization, it's looking at a different way of doing your current business. It touches the business model that you're in. For example, if today you're communicating with your clients directly, uh, or your customers, for example, and now you can move on to e-commerce, where now you have moved and changed the, the, the way you work and communicate um, and in, uh, interact with your customers, you are changing your business model. So this differentiation is important. So perhaps if you are at a lower maturity, you probably would want to look at digitization first, right? Um, no point trying to eat the entire cake when perhaps what you will need is just a slice in the beginning and then move to the next slice. So. Moving on from that, um, the current situation is really, really important uh, in terms of how do we see where the, the region is moving, where the country is moving. And so you can see um, the uncertainties that has arise uh, and the disruption that's happened due to the COVID-19 um, is not just something which, which is just within certain sectors, but this has happened in, uh, globally as well as um, with all the different sectors out there. Yeah? This is pandemic has, as, as they say today, if they, uh, somebody asks you, or a lot of people are saying that, uh, who is really driving digitalization? And the joke out there is that uh, COVID-19 is actually the, the CIO of a company now, right? COVID-19 is your chief information officer who's actually doing. And why I say that is because the impact it has created, the way it has actually stopped. And if you look at even Malaysia in terms of our uh, GDP uh, contribution, I see what Bank Negara has said, it's gone down or it's focused at least at negative two to 0.5%, right? And this is really important to understand from a sectorial macroeconomic perspective, but we are not alone. Many other countries in this region are also facing the same. And the faster we get out of this, um, the better it will be for uh, the economy of the country. 
Now, many of this, um, perhaps you have seen, have heard. I just want to sort of reiterate this. Um, during MCO and even post now, uh, during our MCO, um, what are the main challenges of businesses? Uh, this is something we've captured from a lot of the SMEs, um, from logistics as well as the other sectors. Uh, three key things comes to mind. Yeah, uh, They come to mind very uh, significantly. First is in terms of a lot of sales have been cut. You probably know that already now. Um, you know, a lot of work jobs were not able, were able to continue. Uh, and this impacted the cash flow of a lot of organization uh, where there's not much uh, inflow coming in at the same time. There's a lot of operational resource costs that still needs to be maintained. Even today with some of the businesses already opened and, um, you know, executing, there are additional costs that you need to consider. For example, if you are an F&B, you know that you have to ensure you register all the customers who come in. Uh, you also need to make sure that you take temperature. And of course, in the logistics, that would also come into play. Um, the third one is, of course, in terms of access to current and future customers. As I just mentioned just now, if we do not have, for example, a B2C strategy on, on digital, or like, for example, using e-commerce, uh, you'll probably be cut off with your current customers, uh, even uh, you know, forget about their future customers that you can target. These are some of the views that we have and we have seen, and I'm sure you can share. And I got a bit more as well in terms of the impact. Now, what we realize is that um, the biggest challenge is actually for businesses to continue operating. I think that's the, 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 the key word here. Um, a lot of businesses are unable to continue to operate, so there's no business continuity. And therefore, how do you actually look at digital in terms of ensuring that you can tackle this concern, right? In terms of managing and running a business uh, and continuing doing that. And some of the key statistics here, you probably are aware, but it's interesting to see that um, during these um, challenges, there are also some companies who are doing well, um, perhaps they've figured out something uh, from a digital standpoint, <clears throat> or they have started something much earlier, uh, even before MCO. Um, and you can see some of the statistics there. Um, again, as I said, like there's also a lot of opportunities. We see a lot of, um, you know, a lot of education now is being provided. A lot of solution providers have come forward to support uh, the SMEs, particularly. Um, you webinars today, for example, is an excellent platform uh, that we can immediately engage the right people, uh, the right stakeholders to help you figure out some of these initial parts of digital. Or if even if you have started your digital journey, what will be the next step that you need? Right? <clears throat> I think. People always talk about funding, but to me personally, I think that probably it's something that is relevant if you have figured out what you want to do. And that's the most important thing. And I want to share a bit about that after this. Um, so if you look at the right, <clears throat> the small box I have, I have there, these are some of the things that we need to consider. Now, even though you are in the logistics sector, um, you are not isolated, right, from what's happening within the country. You are directly involved. In fact, you are the chain, the backbone of many different other industries in the country, such as retail and all that, and healthcare. And therefore, understanding what is happening, the landscape that's uh, where it is today, is actually gonna help you also optimize some of the um, you know, way forward that you can look at. Number one is the customer behaviors have changed today. We realize that you know, now a lot more people are online. Today, going on webinar, educating ourselves, is a thing of a norm, right? We call this the new normal today. Uh, people are going online to do purchases. Um, a lot of uh, logistics companies are now facing challenges because demand has increased. And some of um, other players today are trying to become the logistics company because they see there's a lot of opportunity. And this is, this is all driven by the customer behavior. And this is going to change. A lot of people think that this behavior will, will come back again into the normal uh, situation after RMCO, for example. But from the statistics we're getting, e-commerce for example has moved up more than 20 percent and many in many other countries like vietnam it has gone up to, up to 50 percent yeah and this number even if it goes down it is still going to be significantly uh, impactful to the way businesses are going to be carried out the norms has changed as well right uh, remote working and education today for example it's really top of the line today everybody's talking about how can i invest into some of these areas uh, universities uh, private colleges are already doing it schools are doing it and businesses today cannot survive without having this remote uh, working, right? In whatever uh, communication you have. Uh, that is also a challenge. For example, on a day-to-day -day basis, I have 10 Zoom calls uh, that I need to manage, right? And this has become a norm. And how do you work around it? But everything becomes a priority in terms of how do you look at your business moving forward? Um, as I mentioned just now from e-commerce and online services, 
the consumption has gone down, gone up, sorry, very high. And this is going to continue to move uh, upward. And then we need to look at how we can um, capitalize on some of this. The media has changed as well. Today, of course, digital has always been there. The traditional media has been disrupted, but you can see a lot of engagement today in the digital space, in the digital form. So in your business, visibility today is crucial. There's no such thing as a back-end business anymore today. You need to be visible, whether you are B2C, B2B, or which or combination of this. Yeah? And there comes to my next slide. Um, how do we understand um, digital adoption, right? From a journey perspective, how do you start your digital journey? So understanding some of the challenges is now, <clears throat> first of all, you need to understand where do you fit into some of this um, approach when it comes to digital. This is just a guide we built. It's not something cast in stone. Uh, and also that it doesn't mean that you have to start from one. You can also do things in parallel. But most importantly, the first bubble that you see, digital presence. If you have digital presence, that creates that kind of brand, branding, the connectivity that you would want. And it also gives you an opportunity to um, have a greater visibility within the digital space. Uh, there are many different ways you can do it. Of course, the traditional ways to have your website, but today website may not even be significant. Um, you know, because from, from a credibility wise, probably you need a website, but where your customers are is where you want to be. And that's basically in the social media. So faces like Facebook, Instagram, are obviously some of the main ones, but today people are even moving into uh, something much more, uh, you know, holistic. I would say uh, things like TikTok, for example, which is really capturing the younger generation, but today it's actually becoming a business platform. Uh, where a lot of businesses are actually carried out on, on this platform that we probably are not familiar, but it's a way for us now, or an opportunity for us to look at it. Now, once you have visibility, the next way for you to look at, or the next platform you would want to look at is in terms of how can you create some form of transaction? How can you now really do business, um, which is where e-commerce come into play? This is an opportunity for you to do, to buy or sell. You're probably be aware of it already in terms of so many other platforms we have either B2C or B2B platform out there. But this, I would say, the first two bubbles that you would want to look at if you have not been on the digital space. Now, if you have figured this out, then the third, fourth, and fifth bubble, which is actually now getting into your organization, how do you improve your operational? You have goods and services to move. You have warehousing. You have your front end part. Uh, there are a lot of ways for you to improve your digitalization process. And therefore, as what Mr. Alvin mentioned, there are a lot of technologies out there that can support you as well. Now, once you have figured this out, where these are your primary business, I would say, driving force, then you will want to look at your enabling side of it, your human resource, your procurement, and all that, which is actually your back-end process. Um, I think the way from what our, we have seen, the experiences that we are working with the SMEs, once you taste um, you know, the, the impact of digital, once you can make a bit of money, or a bit of access of market, then all the other investment makes more sense. Yeah? I'm, I'm saying this from an entrepreneurial uh, mindset standpoint. Yeah? Um, of course, not everybody will agree with me, but I think you need to see some money when you put in something uh, into this kind of digital journey. Then comes the final part, which is the advanced or emerging technology. Um, big data, IoT, blockchain, now, a lot of these terms um, are always used. Uh, sometimes we understand, sometimes can be confusing, uh, but the way we see is that if you don't do the first three, four bubbles, um, all this, the last bubble may not make a lot of sense to you, right? If you do not understand how this technology work, um, it, as opposed to how your businesses can grow, then it's just going to be a lot of tech talk. And that is something probably you want to avoid at this particular moment. Yeah. Now from an MDEC perspective, from uh, the things that we're doing, we look at it from a three um, pillars, right? In terms of how we can help you. Number one is that you need to look at opportunities like today in terms of how you can educate and uh, we call it excite, right? Digital has to excite you. Um, digital shouldn't be the one that you think, oh, I need to put in another a few hundred thousand because I need to buy system A or system B. That's not it. You need to be excited about digital, the opportunities behind it. So we have programs such as 100 Go Digital um, programs. We have a Facebook um, uh, page as well that you can be a member if you're an SME. Um, where you can actually go in and understand what are the aspects of digital. A lot of programs, even today's webinar has also been um, broadcasted there uh, so that at any point of time, if you're looking at certain knowledge, you have the right people to talk to, you also have the right platform, right? The other one, Go e-commerce, specific one just for e-commerce. I'll share a bit more uh, after this. 
uh, on an enabling side, we also have a program such as uh, digital transformation acceleration program called DTAP 2.0. So some of the things that you can do very quickly is to just pick up some tools. But in a bigger picture, you would also want to go through some form of thinking um, or thought process where you want to understand um, what are the opportunities in digital, how do you prioritize them based on your business, your sector, and then look at digital. So programs such as DTAP 2.0 allows you to get into that uh, thought process. So it's not something that you do within a day. Uh, this program uh, requires a bit more commitment from you, perhaps in a couple of months time, so you can figure out. I've got some examples later I can share with you that some of the companies have gone through this program. And then comes the grant part. So you, if you notice, I always put the grant at the end <laughs> because a grant without, without understanding or without a structure would probably be just another bit of money uh, which is not going to be everlasting, right? And whatever that is out there given by the government is always something to help you to kickstart, help you kickstart so that you can grow and then figure out things on your own. I'll share a bit about the SBDG, the SME Business Digitalization Grant. This is a great grant for you to utilize immediately. Uh, it's not much, but it's great for you to kickstart. Uh, and then, of course, the other grants such as Industry Business Digitalization Transformation Fund, uh, which is slightly much bigger, and that comes in the form of a, a loan. Uh, they, um, in the Panjana announcement um, just uh, recently, uh, Honorable Prime Minister spoke about another grant called the uh, Smart Automation Grant, uh, which will be announced soon. And uh, I think in a couple of weeks' time, I think that's something also that um, you would want to look at. Uh, do have a look out on that as well. Now, so uh, as I mentioned just now, as you start your business, e-commerce is a great platform, regardless whether you're doing B2C or B2B. And in the sector, in the logistics sector, I think this goes without saying that you would want to have clear visibility in terms of how you can maximize on this. So this is a specific uh, platform called Go e-commerce. If you can see the URLs down there, where you can actually go in and register. And once you register, become a member, it's free of charge for, uh, for this. It's actually offered by MDAC with many different partners. There are many things that you can get. For example, online learning in terms of reskilling and upskilling. Uh, there are many different modules there. There are also bookkeeping, basic bookkeeping for financial management uh, and also other engagement sessions there. And also it's a bit kind of interesting that you can actually go through this, they've gamified it a bit um, so that you can also look at um, how do you uh, excite yourself going through this or even for your people, uh, for your staff and employees to go through this. Uh, there's also a bit of a profiling tool there. So if you don't know where you are within the e-commerce space, you can also profile and see how can you be part of this? Where do you benefit? So I do encourage you to look at this. Obviously, there are more than that, um, but then there, this is just uh, the beginning. So as I mentioned, uh, some of the programs such as DTAP 2.0, this is just an example. You may, may or may not be aware of this company, uh, Alien Logistics, but um, I'm not highlighting specific company, but they were the participant of our partner program last year uh, under the UOB FinLab, Jom Transform program. So um, this is an interesting program. As I mentioned just now, as part of the structured approach, uh, many companies, uh, not just logistics, from FNB, from retail, took part. Uh, more than 100 over companies took part in this program. And the whole idea was to take them into a structured approach. And if you can see here, sometimes we think of, uh, we think of a lot of big problems. We start off with big problems. So we have to find a way to break them down into chunks. And sometimes the problems you want to solve immediately may not be that big problem. Maybe that small thing that you can just tweak and you can see immediate impact in terms of your business. So Alien Logistics, for example, so you see that they look at the fleet, uh, warehouse and uh, depots that they have, and they actually look at the, the end delivery as well. Um, one of the major challenges that they figured out within this program was actually to look at how they can manage their financials, right? In terms of their weekly reports, the front end and the back end. And so uh, this takes up a lot of resources, right? I'm sure you would feel it too. And looking at simple technologies such as robotic process automation, RPA, which is super expensive those days, but today are very, very affordable. You could actually basically look at um, and, uh, automating the whole process. And through this program, they were introduced to many different uh, providers. And actually they worked with a startup, interestingly, uh, who were also hungry to look at how they can improve and work. I think that was a perfect partnership that they've gotten. If you look at the outcomes, just within less than three months, 25% uh, improvement in terms of the time, and also cut on in terms of 25, 20% uh, reduced man hours and this resource now can be assigned to do other things uh, in their organization. So this is just a small example. There are many more uh, different examples. In that program, 
overall average, their productivity improvement was 30% uh, out of the uh, you know average of all the participants that took part, and I think that was really great. Uh, you know, um, one two percent would already see a lot of uh, already show a lot of difference. Uh, this is even beyond that. Now, a bit about the grant that I mentioned just now. So, SBDG grant is actually offered by Bank Simpana National. MDEC supports uh, together with uh, SME Bank. MDEC provides the digital solution providers uh, where they need to register with us. We vet through to see whether they are. Uh, ready to support SMEs, whether they're SME friendly, uh, as well as that they have a good track record uh, to support the SMEs. So this grant, if you look at it from an eligibility standpoint, is pretty uh, decent, I would say. It's not targeted for micro SMEs. It's a very much slightly larger micro, small and medium. And, uh, and you can see um, the criteria there, 60% Malaysian owned, uh, registered in the Malaysian laws. If in Sabah, Sarawak, probably not SSM. You've got the local councils uh, that you can register with. As long as you're registered, uh, even if you're a professional body, you could also uh, qualify for this grant. And the qualification criteria is basically, even if you're a year old, we, you still can, uh, you know, with the track record you have, you can still qualify. But of course, then you need to show a proof of your annual uh, sales, which is about 100,000 divided by 12. I think that's pretty decent. Not your revenue, just your turnover, yeah? Um, as well as if you're beyond two years, that means you're much more stable. Um, obviously, then you just need to show that you have 50,000. It is a matching grant of 5,000 ringgit, meaning to say that depending on the cost, government puts in 5,000 and you put in the, the rest. And you may look, may see that this is uh, something which is small, but if you look at it from a digital standpoint, a lot of services today are offered through cloud. So you don't actually need to buy the entire system. What you need to do is actually to look at it from a subscription model. So for example, HR, payroll system and all that today, within a few hundred ringgit or less than thousand ringgit, you could already afford to have this. So under this grant, you can go up to three different digitalization areas that you can qualify for that 5,000 ringgit. And the areas that you see there are actually those uh, seven areas. Five areas already been announced. Uh, area six and seven is coming up very soon. I think e-commerce is very exciting. Of course, I'm sure a lot of us are looking forward to that. But more importantly, the five areas that you see up there basically could cover all the, uh, what we call the low hanging fruit. Yeah. If you want to, when you want to start your digital uh, journey would actually be able to help you. We will put in the link or if you can just uh, Google SME business digitization grant, you'll be able to find all the information An application can be done online at BSM's website. The process is very simple. As you go in, the solution providers list will be there. Look at the ones that you want to have conversation. The contract uh, numbers are there. Speak to them. They will give you a quote. If you're happy with it, then you just need to uh, supply that to BSN. And this project shouldn't take longer than three months or probably one to two months. And then uh, you will need to show the proof that you have paid the 5,000 and then you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, banks in Panamashina will work with the solution provider to ensure that the balance payment is done so that you can focus on your project. Yeah. So. Um, the other thing that we did uh, during this, um, you know, of course, if you don't want to spend money, um, obviously, there's also other things that you can look at quickly. Uh, during M MCO, what we did was we actually spoke to all the technology companies out there. We said, you know, this is the time for you to come forward, look at how you can support the SMEs. And so we created this list of over 400 organizations uh, who have actually came forward to support uh, the multinational, the banks, the telcos, as well as the technology solution providers. If you go to this website, uh, you'll see a lot of solutions. And what we did was we looked at it from an SME standpoint. We looked at the 400, we zoomed down and we said, look, for SME, perhaps these are the things that you want to look at. We spoke to the solution providers and said, okay, what about this five areas? Can you provide something which is maybe free for now, right? With uh, some terms and condition, or maybe something which is heavily discounted. And this is some of the things that you can find. And uh, what we did was we actually launched this thing called SME Digital Quick Win. You probably have heard of it in the news. Um, this is also part of the recovery process that to support the government. And the process is very simple. Just go to this URL and you'll be asked about the, for you to register first. And then what are the digitalization areas you want to look at? And then once you register, we will link you up to us immediately. Uh, the process is automated uh, where you can uh, basically uh, have access to some of the solution providers out there. And then basically then you can communicate with them. They'll tell you what is the package that uh, they have. A lot of companies have gone forward for this. Uh, every time we speak to associations, uh, they love this because, uh, you know, this very simple. 
insignificant investment, but an opportunity for you to start. But I would encourage you not to stop there. Um, if you can, go for the uh, SPDG grant uh, directly as well. So I just want to conclude there. I think there's a lot more opportunities out there. There's a lot more things uh, that can be said. I would love to have a conversation with you in the uh, Q&A session after this. So thank you and uh, back to you, Ms. Reshma. Thank you very much, Mr. Mohandan. That was a very insightful presentation you gave us. And I like the way you started the session by trying to explain the difference between digitizing and digitalizing. Because yes, I think the first step is digitizing. If you're not there yet, you have to get there first. And I like those little balloons that you gave us um, uh, where uh, in terms of in, in order for companies, for SMEs, to get themselves on the bandwagon. I know we have this tendency when something comes out, everybody joins the bandwagon without really knowing if that is the solution that you need. So it's interesting how you say, first take a look at what are the challenging areas and whether these are the areas that you can um, actually reduce a significant amount of your, your uh, operating uh, cost and also be able to um, increase your bottom lines and increase your sales. And you're right. I mean, um, if I may use a personal uh, um, the experience, I would say that uh, my company too, we just recently went on to e-learning on an e-learning platform. And uh, we're very lucky. I think this was the first time we've had foreign students joining in. So yes, the opportunities are limitless. And the way technology works is like, um, you can never expect... Um, it to work immediately at that time. There's a lot of trial and error. So you have to have the um, appetite and the tenacity to uh, ensure that it's a, it's a continuous improvement um, uh, situation, so to speak. So thank you very much. And now I think it's time for us to start taking these questions because we've got a couple of questions that were sent to us um, prior to uh, the webinar. And uh, I'll start with these questions, then I'll take the questions that are in the Q&A box by the attendees. So the first question posted is to uh, uh, Mr. Elvin Chua. You, you mm -hmm. apparently present, Elvin Chua, the, the, the question here, the person is anonymous, they've not given their name. You mentioned that FMFF has, a, has held a meeting with your state association members on the pro proposal to digitize the logistics business and responses from that meeting has been good. What will your strategy be to push your members towards digitalization when more than 70% of your members are micro and small? Right, thank you very much. Uh, I think you've got something else on, so you're coming in echoes. <laughs> right, I don't know why. Uh, you yeah. probably have another window open, um, Elvin. Probably that's why. Sometimes when you have another window open. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay perfect. Now? Yes, perfect. Yes. So, uh, the three bubble, uh, the five bubbles that uh, you shared just now uh, is, the, is very important for the journey for us to digitize is very, very important. Okay. Uh, out of the five bubble, you see e-commerce there as one of the lead bubble. Right. Uh, without logistics, e-commerce will not move at all. Mm. So the importance of uh, logistics is actually is the backbone for e-commerce and also for our these uh, businesses, our trading, you know, without uh, uh, logistics, you know, nothing moves. You cannot trade at all. All right. So, so uh, we need to really uh, focus on, you know, how to improve and digitalize uh, the, our, this, uh, this industry. So as you are aware, you know, we are half there, all right? A lot of things are digital already. We use a lot of data. The only thing is that all the data is not interfaced, right? The system that we use are not actually user-friendly and outdated. And it, the functionality uh, and outdated function and uh, also the technology. He heavy manual data entry and repetitions of wiking into different uh, uh, this software, uh, different sets of documents required for the regulatory body, you know, for approval and logistic booking and arrangement, silo system assist between the uh, within the, the organization, mm. paper based trade document, printer, field and store for customer at offices and warehouses, compounded up to maybe hundred box a year to be yeah. kept for ten years. You know, manual process inefficiency seventy percent time 
spend on telephones, call and email, updating customer, you know. So that's why, that's how I, I told all my members, uh, do you still want to work this way? You know, you can't, right? So that's why. Oh, so can I say moving ahead, Mr. Elvin, that the strategy here that you would want to communicate is that um, the five bubbles that um, Mr. Mohundan had, had presented to us. So in order to strategize uh, which, uh, which one of your members, because I think your members were interested to know how would they be able to uh, join in in this, you know? So in order for them to move up to digitalization, I guess the strategy would be that. Would you say that? Following yeah. that same strategy? So that's why we have to come up with programs and awareness. On how right. to do this. We don't just want to, to talk only that, no, we must, we must digitalize, but how? The, the how is always there, you know? That's where AMBEC come in together with the, in the, with the industry, with the association, you know, to come up with a program, right? Ready program for them, uh, and then to make it uh, easy for them, uh, make them a startup entry, the journey, uh, the, the journey that they're talking about. All right. Okay. All right. The, the station and also the back end. These two we need, right? So we are looking at the last one, you know, working from home, right? For our industry, meaning okay. that you know, we had uh, we had to we had to interface our all our software that we have now at the moment, or all the all the all the silos, mm -hmm. and also had to be on cloud based so that we can work on home. So everyone right. can work um, uh, remotely wherever they can, right? Um, it, now, it, we, with this, with this, as what uh, Mo say, you know, yeah. or when, when he introduced uh, a company called Alien, Alien just joined our association. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're a relatively new company. They're also a client of ours, so it was very exciting to see them. Our member yeah. yesterday, okay. we just approved them yesterday as our member. Excellent, okay, so excellent. Yeah, uh, Mr. Wait, wait, wait. During this MCO time, you know, yeah. uh, we have more than uh, 30 companies wanting to join the association now. They look at the importance of uh, the federation because we really support them during MCO, you know, you know talking to MIT, MO, uh, to, to MOT, uh, to, get, to get their office open. But yeah. the difference is because they are not digitalized, okay, one thing. Uh, they are not in cloud. They have to yeah. come back. Some of the company was actually also raided by the local authority uh, to close down because they don't um, comply uh, didn't get the MITI approval they don't, no they don't follow the sop in the office oh. itself. everybody go to work instead of half of the other but they can't you see as i said all the silos all the client-based software they are having in their office yeah right? it's all client-based exactly mr mohinder now we've got a question from from our panel of attendees and this question i'm trying to see how am i going to phrase it to you Okay, so um, what I understand from your, from your presentation is that um, it says 50% for up to 5,000 per type of solution, or is it a one-time investment? So I think the question here is, it mentions there 50% and it also mentions a 5,000. So I think what um, the attendees want to know is exactly what is it? Is it uh, we pay up first and then... Um, uh, we get only 5,000 based on one uh, uh, solution, or is it a deck of solutions, or how does this work? Sure, okay, yeah. Um, allow me to uh, give more, a bit more details on this. So the grant is basically, uh, the maximum amount is 5,000 ringgit. Yeah? Per company, is it? Per company. Yeah. And it is in the form of matching grant. It means if your project cost, right, your total solution cost is uh, 10,000 ringgit, mm -hmm. so 5,000 ringgit will be given by the government and the balance 5,000 ringgit you would need to put up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so again, like I said, um, most of the cost is usually much lower than that. Um, and this 5,000 ringgit is per company. It means, and it is for uh, three different digitalization areas. So mm -hmm. in total, it's 5,000 ringgit. Yeah. Okay, so it, it doesn't, because when we talk about uh, logistics service providers, they will be looking at a deck of uh, solutions, like from TMS to freight management systems, to even financials and HR, as you mentioned, because these are, like you said, the low-hanging fruits. They're already cloud-based, and we can already go there. So, But I guess that would also be the concern, which many of our traditional firms have, is uh, the, sh the information, the security of the information that sits on the cloud. Yes, I think uh, there's always been a lot of argument discussion on this, but I think 
if you look at how things are moving forward, right, with with uh, the current situation and the security in terms of having those information at your own place and having it in uh, cloud service providers today have changed a lot, yeah? because mm-hmm. there are uh, there are a lot of regulation put in place uh, in terms of putting things in the cloud. And if you look at it, uh, one is so from a cost perspective, of course, it's much more uh, significant. Yeah. Uh, but from a security standpoint, actually. Now the thinking is reversed, right? It's probably much more safer for you to have it in the cloud uh, because of the different level of security elements that's there. Uh, rather than sitting it, uh, you know, in your... Uh, Terminal or your system, yeah. Or even in your office. So that's something, a change of mindset that's required. I think it's a lot of mindset. Um, I think we always have fear when we don't have or we don't see the data. Mm. But again, even countries are actually now putting things on cloud. Uh, you know, even Malaysia has moved up to a certain extent uh, to have this data on cloud. Thank you very much. Thanks. So it's everybody. Yeah, it's a a shift in mindset. We all have to shift our mindsets now. And um, I always like to use this line, digitalize or vaporize. So you you have no other way. (laughs) You cannot continue uh, working in, in, you know, running a business these days. Um, Elvin, we have one more question for you, Elvin. And this uh, question is, uh, again, I believe from your members. you have strongly urged that FMFF members should digitize, digitalize their businesses. What will be the deciding factors for your members to rally to your call? Actually, uh, as I say again, uh, in the new normal, all right, uh, the, the visibility and also increased day-to-day business performance is very important. Okay? So we had to work from a virtual office, reducing our operating costs, improve efficiency, Gain customer service and uh, custom customer retention using technology. That's the only way that we have to go forward. If not, we will lose out you know, tremendously. Especially when e-commerce is coming up so strongly, the back-end logistics. You know, if we don't follow the trend they are they are doing now, the e-commerce, uh, we we will be be left behind. You know, in the end, uh, they can also come into our 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 area to do logistics. All right, so. Uh, we are going to propose our our this uh, go digital proposal to MDAC mm-hmm. and let them open up and, and let them see so that they can come up a program for logistics. I think so with our three thousand thousand old members together with their companies, uh, it will be about three thousand to four thousand companies together in my association alone. You know, uh, if we say fifty percent of them can go digital, I think so. They, this will be very very fantastic and good. Uh, for the country, you know. Can I ask you another, this is my question, not really panel or, or attendees question. Is this open, Elvin, only to FMFF members or is it to any Malaysian logistics service provider? Do you, is it a deciding factor? That means I have to be a, a member of FMFF or any one of your uh, associate units? You, you, you see how MDEC works, you know, it's very fair to all, all, all government, all Malaysian companies. It's not just. It's not just that we endorse. We only endorse the the service provider. In the end, the service provider will still have to be uh, to be engaged with MDAC, uh, uh, approved and appointed by MDAC for us to engage with them. Mm-hmm. So it's not us to, to the deciding uh, this uh, association to say that only my member can join. I think so. This one for the country, I think so it's open for all members. Excellent, excellent. So in collaboration with CILT Malaysia, this is not just restricted to FMFF members or CILT members. This is for the country. So even if you're not a member, you can still, uh, who do they talk to? Do they talk to you, Mr. Elvin? Is it going to be you, the point of contact for this? Uh, To the service providers. Yeah, for the service providers and anything relating to um, what Mr. Uh, Moh- uh, what Mr. Moho had um, uh, presented to us in terms of getting the assistance from MDEC, that of course will be channeled directly to them. Is that yes? Big- the Go Digital is there, you know, and all the companies who want to participate participate in this Go Digital is actually registered with uh, MDEC, so it's open for them to choose what company they want to use. Yeah, so we have, we also have another question and we're getting close to our ending of our webinar because it's a 60 minute talk and we're almost there. But in this question is how can small businesses cope with this challenge, all these costs? So yeah, that's, that's a strategy decision. I don't know whether either one of you want to share 
how do they cope with this challenge? Yeah, it's it's not as costly as it was, but yeah, please. Uh, whether Mr. Mohundan, you want to start first? Sure. I, I think you know, as the whole conversation today is about how do you number one is continue operating. Mm. I think that's the biggest challenge today. I forget about expanding and making you know uh, tons growth. of money exactly. <laughs> uh, but again, you know, many are thriving, right? And I think the differentiator here is that um, as some of these companies perhaps have figured out. The digital strategy behind. Mm. I do agree. Strategy is a big word, um, and for small businesses, may not make sense. I completely agree. But strategy could be as simple as where is your direction. Uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, find a way to identify where the opportunities or the pain points are in your organization. Uh, this is really crucial, and it's not a rocket science to think about this. Uh, be part of uh, MDEX programs such as uh, the Hundred Go Digital. Um, you know, we have a lot of these sessions. In fact, we just launched a program together with DG uh, called Business Continuity Digitalization, BCD. Okay. Um, it actually runs on a uh, uh, bi-weekly uh, basis. Um, where we actually, number one, share some of the key challenges, uh, opportunities. The second is also we bring in the solution providers to talk about it, right? And for them to share. And therefore, you can have a very comfortable interaction with solution providers uh, in a you know in a, in a more uh, neutral platform rather than you trying to invite them to your organization. So that's yeah, really excellent initiative because for many of us who are yeah a lot of us have been catching up in terms of our tech knowledge during the MCO at, at least I know I did for the first two weeks uh, sit down and crack my head and learn as much as I could and yeah there's a lot of resources available online but it is very assuring to us that the government is taking that step to help us out because many many of us are afraid. We don't know, are we making the right decisions? We've seen big companies literally purchase white elephants, you know, that are, have millions of ringgit and not working at all. And uh, many of the small and my, smaller, not even the medium size, the smaller companies, they don't have the uh, the you know the the liquidity so to speak in order to take uh, uh, you know take a chance so to speak so it's interesting that also MDEC has got all these programs I know that I'll be joining it I'm quite interested and many things that I did not know either so you have really given us a very good insight on what the government has been doing actually it's not something new right I understand you've been doing a lot of this already and um, it is so nice that um, Elvin and yourself have uh, agreed to come on board to, you know, to share this thing, to champion this thing. And I'm so happy that um, CILT Malaysia is also a part of it and our president is here. Um, now, I think that maybe we ought to end the session. We are already five minutes past the session. Someone has asked whether we can share the slides. We're recording the session. So, it's being streamed and it'll be on YouTube and you can always have access to it. So it's going to be shared in multiple places, uh, not to worry. So you can get, you can see the slides that Mr. Uh, Mohundan has shared with us. And um, maybe what I will do is I'm going to uh, have each speaker take five minutes to conclude your, 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 um, uh, this webinar. And uh, the final would be, of course, uh, our president, Tuan Haji Ramli. He will uh, give us a few parting words to summarize our webinar today. And um, yeah, we will be having ongoing series. So this is not the first. I mean, or this is not the last. This is the first of many that is uh, that is uh, that, that will become rolling out on our end. So I'll start with Elvin. Can you give us a little five minutes? Okay, thank you very much. And uh, firstly, I would like to thank CLT and also uh, Mr. Muhu for coming today for our first uh, Tech Talk collaboration. Uh, collaboration. Right, this is, as, as what uh, Rashma have said, it's not our first one. Our second one, uh, we're going to get uh, MOT to come in to talk about, you know, the importance of the industry. Right, so uh, we hope that, uh, you know, MDAC really uh, are there to support us uh, we are really serious to go into digitalization, right? We are nearly ready there already, you know. We have also identified all the technology uh, providers, right? So uh, we, the, th the whole team will come together and discuss this and accelerate this as soon as possible because uh, they are really nearly there with all their interface, uh, their, their interfacing and collaboration among the three or four uh, providers. 
So in the end, you know, our member will get the custom software, the freight forwarding software, and uh, this uh, accounting software, you know, three in one for for a price, you know, for a startup. It's something like what uh, Muhui had uh, proposed, you know, uh, 5,000 to 5,000 grand, that kind of thing, right? But I know that, that in, your, in your 2020, that one, you know, uh, logistics is not there. Maybe we can create one there so that we can quickly yeah. do. Yeah, right. thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Elvin. Mr. Mohun, you are, it's yours now. Thank you, Mr. Reshma. I think uh, my parting uh, words, <clears throat> I think primarily, how do we look at digital? I think we had a lot of conversation just now. And I have this sort of a, a guide that I have. Some people call it mantra, maybe. yeah. Uh, something that I learned from a very senior entrepreneur, a manufacturer in Penang, um, who actually uh, really inspired me when I started looking at digital adoption. And he said, um, there's three things, right? First is you've got to think big. You have to think big in digital. There's no way. Everything is big in digital. Your market is the world, for example, right? Uh, but you start small. So that's really important as well. We call it like a MVP, minimal viable product. It means that you don't have to have every feature. You start with a few features that make sense to you first because you're solving a problem and then you go from that. So that's crucial. And if you're able to start small, then you have to figure out how do you scale fast. That's also the mantra in digital because you can't just stay small. You know that in digital, whatever that's relevant to you today will be expired by next month or the month after. So how do you look at something like, for example, rather than having uh, a client system base, you probably would already want to look at a, um, a cloud-based system, right? Because you know scale is important. Today, your market is growing. So that's the last part, how you scale fast. So think big, start small, and scale fast is something that I would want everyone to remember at the end of this, today's session. And so I'd like to thank uh, uh, CILT as well as FMFF for the opportunity. Uh, Ms. Reshma, Tuan Haji, and Mr. Halvan, I think, thank you so much for the opportunity. We love to connect, and I think there's a lot more things we can do. I would love to come for any, uh, many more sessions with you all, uh, maybe even in person to share more. Um, as I've said, there are more um, opportunities that are going to be announced in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we'll keep you in the loop uh, as well as FMFF. Uh, Mr. Alvin, we've been working very closely. I've been in many of your sessions, your meetings, and I think also with our other e-commerce teams that we're trying to make a difference. And we are always there uh, as a partner to the industry uh, to make things happen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Mohundan. That is really nice of you to say. And then uh, we can always step on you, yeah? So the invitation is an open invitation. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm now going to pass the mic to our president, uh, Tuan Haji Ramli, sir. Yep. Uh, thank you, Rashima. Um, CLT Malaysia, and on behalf of the Federation of Freight Forwarders, would like to thank both, both speakers for a very clear elucidation uh, for the need to improve on the, the digital platform that all the logistic providers should embark on so that the logistic delivery system can be uh, further enhanced and how the financial packages can boost the implementation for such a system to be in place. But I would like uh, foremost to thank uh, Alvin for airlifting CILTM into the whole scenario. Uh, and being a member yourself, uh, I think this is a uh, good deed uh, done by, by its members there. So, we will hope to see more of uh, Mr. Muhu and uh, Elvin. And uh, bearing in mind that the in the international scene, uh, we all have heard that DP World, uh, as a logistic enabler of global trade, has completed some early stages of integration, right? Um, with a blockchain-based digital container logistic platform which is jointly developed, I heard, uh, jointly developed by AP Moller, Musk, and IBM, uh, so that it would accelerate the seamless connectivity of all the, uh, the, 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 the related companies that is with them. So to this, we hope to be aligned to the global standards and to be on the right path, I suppose. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So this is truly a way forward. And uh, to that, we thank you, both of you, very, very much. Back to you, Rashmi.
Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Mr. Elvin and Mr. Mohun, uh, for, for joining us today. I will share um, some information uh, on, I believe, some websites were given to me uh, to share. So I will be sharing this information on our, during the YouTube, uh, in our YouTube as well and uh, in our, on our websites and Facebook page where uh, everyone can go to these links uh, in order to get more information on how do you uh, facilitate yourself, get yourself enabled uh, digitally uh, with the help of MDEC. So 60 minutes, a little bit more than 60 minutes of Logistics Tech Talk. The talk goes on. This is not the end of the session. Thank you very much, our fellow speakers. Thank you, attendees. Thank you for all your questions. If we were unable to answer any of them, please be rest assured we'll be answering them uh, within a week to you. Thank you very much, and bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.